grown-ups, inadvertent preschool teachers. How are you doing today? All right, if you haven't seen any of our other little story time extension videos, um, I'm Miss Lisa. My background is as a preschool teacher, and um, we were thinking that with so many friends perhaps not being able to go to school like they had planned, um, that we would maybe do some little videos with ideas that you can try based on this week's story time theme. So this week we're talking about fall or autumn, and I have a bunch of tree related ideas for you. Are you ready? Okay, so the first one, this one is the most preparation. So don't get too freaked out because you know that I do not like to do a lot of preparation for any one area that my kids are gonna play with. All right, so this one is, we made a tree and I found some brown pipe cleaners twisted them up at the middle and then turned it into tree branches and a tree trunk and then I just taped it to a little um, container that we had at home and for us we couldn't find our buttons see I don't like to do a lot of prep um, but you could do buttons on this or you can just string on some pony beads so these are the <laughs> that one is just taking the focus right off my face isn't it all right so these are pony beads you're gonna string on to the branches and then you're gonna fill it up so you have a brightly colored fall tree now what colors are you probably gonna use you could talk with your child about that you want to talk with using like yellows and oranges and reds and browns and maybe some green ones but my little lovelies put like some purple ones on here and some stuff like that so you can talk about what what colors we would use you can work on sorting the beads or the buttons um, it's nice with buttons because you have a couple different sizes with the pony beads you just have the one size but either way you're really working on those fine motor skills and on the hand-eye coordination of putting them on to the pipe cleaners so you can end up with a really cute tree or a fairly bare tree like the one I have right now with its purple beads all right so that is a really fun one for that pincer grip working on building those writing muscles when they start writing um, it also is a little bit of math and a little bit of science yeah because we're talking about what colors leaves are going to change into and you can count how many are on a branch and things like that all right another more obviously math idea is using uh, play-doh to make apples for an apple tree so I found these online and printed them you do not have to do that you can just draw an apple tree or you can just make apples but I liked this one because it includes something called a 10 frame and they're gonna do a lot with 10 frames in kindergarten um, so a 10 frame is literally just a frame where you have space for 10 items I know it's so complicated isn't it But there's always gonna be space for five on top and five on the bottom so that as our kids um, start getting faster at seeing this they would be able to tell that if this one is almost all the way full but it's still missing one that's a nine and then they don't have to sit there and go one two three yeah but that takes practice and that takes time so we're gonna start exposing them to this idea early and when they're still young so what they would do is try to recognize the number at the top or the word for the number at the bottom and then they're gonna make that many apples and put them on the tree and then if you're working on this they can also put nine apples over here they can move them over from the tree or do something like that another great skill with this is that you're working on forming a ball with play-doh and believe it or not that's a lot of writing muscles too it is All right you wouldn't believe how many friends I've known that didn't know how to make a snake with play-doh and we don't think about that being a skill that we need to work on so b making snakes making balls that's all great um, you would want to make some snakes for this one to fill in the number maybe or you could get a dry erase marker out and do that and then fill this in with the dry erase marker up to you all right so that would be obviously math huh. okay and then I had a couple ideas that would involve being outside so if you don't have a natural spot right near you um, they might work best if you can go to a park or something like that we are fortunate that we have a couple trees in our backyard so we've been able to do this activity just in our backyard um, but if you are maybe going to the apple orchard or doing some sort of field trip like that this might be some good extension activities uh, but what I was thinking is that we could collect some twigs and things that have fallen to the ground and we can practice writing our letters out of the twigs so you would shape them together to try to make your letter 
So like my littlest one, her first letter is a P. So she found a twig that had like a Y shape to it. And that was the bottom of the P and the straight line. And then she added two other pieces so that she had a P. So they're not going to be exactly like the letters that they would be writing, but it's really great for their letter recognition. Um, you could also use leaves to make pictures like in one of my favorite books for this time of year, Leaf Man. Oh, it is wedged in my bin. Hold on. Okay, there we go. This is Leaf Man by Lois Ellert. And I love that she uses real leaves. And we read this in story time. But if you haven't watched the story time video, um, she goes through and makes a lot of different things out of leaves. So on this page, there's like a turkey and some vegetables from a garden. Um, and she goes through and makes, oh, there's fish. Oh, yep, there's the fish page. There's a page with a turtle on it. Um, so your child could make those things out of leaves. Last week, my kids made a dragon out of the leaves. I don't know, kept them busy. All right, so I was thinking that could be a fun activity as well. When you're collecting the leaves, you can also use them to make leaf rubbings. So you would lay down the leaf, lay down the paper on top of it, and then turn a crayon on its side and take the paper off of it. This is a great use for the old crayons that nobody wants to use great use for those. So you turn them on their side and then you rub it over the paper and you will end up with an outline of the leaf and you'll get to see all the leaf's veins. So then you could talk about the amazing science of how those leaf veins bring water and what they need out to the parts of the body. And then you can talk about how our bodies do the same thing. I know I get really nerdy, but that's a pretty fun activity too. All right. I was also thinking that you could do this one's another one that's a little bit of mess, but it doesn't take all that long to do, okay? And I'm gonna get messy trying to get it out, but um, it is an activity where you would draw the, well, there's a lot of branches under there, but you can't see them because she covered them in paint. But you would draw the branches and the tree trunk of a tree. I usually like to do it this way, but my four-year-old, you know, she marches to her own beat. So you would want to fill up the page with the tree trunk and the branches and then you'll take i don't know if i'm supposed to use brand names but two plows or if you have bricks anything like that and do stamps into paint and then onto your tree and it'll make beautiful leaves i see that mine decided again march into her own beat to turn one of them over and do stamps with the bottom of it um, I was thinking the more traditional circles on the top, but you do you. All right, so I always love this project because it ends up so individualized um, by the child. So they do kind of however they want. I've seen a lot of kids do it sorting the colors, but I would just put out some fall colored paints and do that activity. Um, if you don't have any supplies for some of this stuff, there are some easy subs. Um, if you don't have paint and you just want to draw a tree, that's absolutely fine. Um, you could build a, a tree out of Duplos. That's what my daughter thought we were doing at first. Um, and let's see. And with this one, like I said, you could use buttons or beads. Um, that's what we had around. You could also cut leaves out of paper if you have some, if you have some scrap paper and string that onto here, or you could even get leaves from around as you're collecting things for your other projects, and you could poke those onto here too. Um, let's see. I also think, my, in my experience, kids will write so much more if we put a clipboard on it and let them just walk around. I know, it's like a weird trick, but it works. So if you decide to go for a nature walk and explore while you're outside and you can take along a piece of paper and attach it to a clipboard and a pen or pencil, probably a pencil. Pens are tricky for kids. Um, but with pencils and crayons, we make them apply pressure, which is really good for their writing skills too. So you can take along a writing utensil of whatever choosing and have them document their observations while you're walking around and try to see point out some things that are fall related, like the fact that some of the trees are changing color or that the air feels cooler, or maybe you see less bugs, or maybe you see more squirrels. So go look around and try to see what you notice, especially if you can get your kid to sit still for a couple minutes and let the wildlife just adjust to them. 
it's so fun to see what happens then. All right, I think that's all of my ideas for this week. I hope it gives you lots of fun ideas, and I hope that you're really enjoying this time at home with your preschooler. I'll talk to you soon.